I'm going to share with you a tale, a tale in which my life journey is narrated. I neither do consider myself different from any of you, nor have I done something bold and brilliant, because I think everyone has the same potential to be bold and brilliant. Today, I am going to take you down my memory lane, and you can decide for yourself what you want to take out of this. I am not going to give you any piece of advice. This is the story of a young girl who named herself when she was four. She used to joke about it that since she was the third girl in her family, her parents didn't even care what her name was. Imagine if she said pumpkin, they would go like, all right, let's call her pumpkin. But fortunately, that was not the case. Her parents were very supportive and they accepted her decision. Since then, she always followed her decisions, her instincts and her heart. She grew up in a very beautiful village with brooks, paddy fields, hills and a lot of trees. She used to have evening walks around the trees and she personally knew them and got frustrated if she found one missing. She used to wonder why people cut down trees that bear fruits and provide green cover for them. She grew up reading books, traveling around, walking around. Yes, like everyone else, she had one painful experience too that was to be shared. One of her teachers humiliated her in front of the whole class because she couldn't solve a problem in maths. And the rude remarks made by the teacher about her sickness did hurt her. And as a result, she hated the subject as well as her teacher. Later, in her school days, another teacher who inspired her as she was taught how to love a subject. And that is when she realized she has this tremendous love for nature, plants and environment. So she did further studies and understood that she can take up this as a career. And she decided to do that. Thus, she took her first train ever to Dehradun, chasing her dreams to study about forest and plants. As the train approached Dehradun, she just realized the world is different. Everybody was talking in Hindi, and it did scare the life out of her because she didn't understand a thing. But gradually, she developed interest in the area, and she got herself adapted into the environment. And the beautiful Middle Himalayas helped her to mold the researcher in herself. She began her research life in wildlife science by observing the plants, butterflies, and every life around her. The very first adventurous trip as a student was to travel to the lower Assam, bordering Bhutan, to learn about a project. She couldn't even speak Hindi, and here she was in Assam, expecting the people from Assam to talk to her in English. All she had was 5,000 rupees that was given by her sister. She soon realized the place where she was staying had 5,000 rupees per day as rent. So she couldn't handle that. She talked to the forest official, and he was very kind enough that he took her to his home, to his daughters. And he had four daughters. And she stayed there for one week, celebrating culture, cuisine, and learning. It helped her to understand the goodness in humans, even in unfamiliar space. Since then, opting for travels that include huge risk was a normal thing for her. She traveled further. She traveled to the Jammu and Kashmir, Kashmir Valley, where she 
studied Asiatic black bear. And then she moved to the most beautiful Arunachal Pradesh, where she studied primates. And she decided to spend the next three years of her life in the northeastern Himalayas of Arunachal. And she studied ecology, plants and animals, and their interactions. But the life in the northeastern Himalayas wasn't very easy. The land was so beautiful. The people were so kind and very nice. But the life of a woman researcher in her own company, staying in the remotest part of the country, was very difficult. She was often scared of the swollen Brahmaputra in the monsoon that cut you off in a tiny bit of land from the rest of the India. She used to stay in the rainforest, sometimes in huts like this, where you could have hundreds of leeches crawling upon your feet the moment you step on the floor. Imagine nature's call at night. She survived there for three years. After that, she had a lot of days filled with adrenaline. Then she decided it's time for to go back. And she decided to go back home to the Western Ghats where she belonged and to pursue her doctoral studies. And she took up orchid ecology as her subject. But for many officials, it was a problem that a woman going alone into the forest, even with all required permits. She was often told to bring relatives and family along with her. She was offended. She gave them a befitting reply that, I am not here for a festival to bring my family along. I am here for my work. Apart from handling gender issues, money issues, she had more problems coming at her. According to statistics, 30% of research scholars suffer from mental sickness in their research career. And it doesn't change in this case, too. In all aspects of research, she was doing very well. She got grants, recognitions, awards, and she traveled to different countries for conferences and training. But the moment she claimed that her research was going to be big and groundbreaking, that was when she lost the game. She developed fear deep inside. She developed imposter syndrome, wherein she doubted her own abilities, and she feared that she was being fraud. She was not doing justice to her work. Afraid that she would meet the expectations of her guide, she fell into stress and anxiety. And the next three months of her life was very difficult. She couldn't read a thing, she couldn't write a thing. Nothing on earth excited her. It was blank. And it scared her to death. But she accepted the fact. And she tried to identify her symptoms. She wanted to treat herself. She wanted to save herself out of the situation. So she took her back to the village where she started her trails, to the village trails. She walked those trails again. And she did everything that was so dear to her. She did photography, she did flower hunting, she did trails and treks. And finally, she came back to new life in full throttle. And this time, she was stronger and more capable than ever before. Now, she was able to complete her work. And she learned that though her research findings are big in their own respect, it adds only a tiny drop to the vast ocean of knowledge that is ecology. 
That was her lesson. She was humbled. A journey spanning 10 years of ecological research had its merits and challenges. More than a research, it was a spiritual journey for her. She explored her femininity through nature. And she explored nature through her femininity. She believed women could connect with the earth on their own. And she read and explored more about deep ecology, ecofeminism, feminine spirituality, etc. She used to think why most environmentalists are women. But in her case, she was able to connect to the earth and to herself with the help of many amazing men and women. Some of them included the woman with the sweet voice from whom she got her name, her mother, who is an amazing observer of the natural world, the woman who taught her how to love nature, the woman she did forgive, the woman who helped her to practice patience and empathy, the woman who inspired her to reduce her carbon footprint, and the hundreds of women and men who fed her, sheltered her, and embraced her during her journeys in India and abroad. And finally, the man who helped her to define and attain the spirituality, the divinity of love. Her journey to herself and to the earth wouldn't have been possible without them. The more she connected with the earth, the more she became a minimalist, a feminist who believes in uniqueness and equality. Someone that experiments with truth, a woman who believes in feminine qualities, a messenger of love, a blessed soul, a seeker. And this process taught her many new things. It taught her how to find knowledge around her. And it has prepared her to unlearn and relearn. And it has helped her to redefine success. And she felt that the earth always answers her prayers. Today, she is living her dreams, following her heart and finding her task ahead. Yes, she is a woman of the earth. She, she represents every individual who has the longing to be part of the nature, part of the universe or earth, and find themselves. She is the metaphor of those who are on their path to their truth. She doesn't represent any gender. The journey to earth and beyond fundamentally unfolds the journey to yourself. Thank you.